Welcome to Unit 10 of the TESOL course at Southern Utah University. In this video, we'll focus on speaking activities and assessment. We'll talk a little bit about the role of the speaking teacher, and then talk about learning activities uh, in the speaking classroom, as well as some assessment tips. And then we'll finish up by talking about what successful speakers do. As we mentioned before, speaking is both a productive skill and an oral language skill. A speaking teacher uh, needs to be more than just a native speaker. And this has often been the impression, maybe sometimes especially abroad, that if you can speak English, native speaker or not, you can be a good speaking teacher. But it's not true. First, just because you're a native speaker doesn't mean you're a good teacher, and you don't have to be a native speaker of the language to be a great speaking teacher. But what uh, good speaking teachers do is they consider learners levels and goals they select textbooks and materials that are appropriate for the learners and for the tasks and outcomes that those learners need they also think about how technology can help support learning both in the classroom and outside of the classroom um, speaking teachers also uh, reduce the amount of speaking that they do in the class in order to maximize the amount of practice that learners get in the class using language. Um, so we call that reduction of teacher talk and improving the amount of student talk. Uh, speaking teachers are also good at giving feedback. They pay attention to learners and they give support and tips and advice and correction when necessary. They also assess learner speaking. Um, and we'll talk more about that uh, a little bit later. Um, but when we talk about this idea of giving feedback, um, teachers need to be careful about this and be sensitive to it. Um, one way to do it is just give recast. So a learner makes an error and the teacher um, restates what the learner should have said. And this is just a simple way to draw um, listener's attention to the forms and help them to maybe correct it in the future. Um, another way to do it is um, to do anonymous correction. So you maybe hear some errors in the classroom and then you take a break in the class and say, okay, here's some things I heard and here's how we could fix them. Um, and whenever you give uh, feedback to learners, always make sure that you're giving lots of positive reinforcement. Let them know about all the good things that they're doing. Um, when you do have to correct, um, wait until they finished their conversations to interrupt learners while you're encouraging them to practice in order to correct them can discourage them and could get them to shut down and stop um, communicating. Um, good teachers use lots of group and pair work in the classroom. Um, and if there's an odd number of students, you know, I always jump in and I work with a, a partner. So I want the students to practice as much as they can, and so that's why um, I use lots of group work. And I help learners understand why we use group work, because some students will come from backgrounds where using group work seems pointless, or, you know, I should be only interacting with the teacher. Um, but we need to help them realize that they need this practice, and practicing with a partner can be a great way to get that comprehensible output to start using the language. Um, in terms of speaking activities, um, we could do activities that are more language focused and others that are more uh, meaning focused. Um, some of the language focused ones could be activities where we're doing lots of repetition or maybe we're doing activities where we're focusing more on accuracy and grammatical or vocabulary forms. Meaning focused activities could be things that are more discussion and interaction versus things that are more presentation. So we can think about a wide variety of activities. Repetition ones could be drills in the classroom, or reading aloud, um, doing translation activities, or listening to music and trying to mimic the music and imitate it um, to work on pronunciation. Accuracy things could be um, sentence completion um, or question and answer responses. There's lots of games that are good for uh, doing accuracy or retelling stories can help um, learners focus on particular grammatical forms. Um, with discussion, we've got things like jigsaw activities. We talked about this in the reading unit, but having learners learn something in one group and then go to another group and have to teach uh, their new group members about what they learned in the first group. 
lots of role play or simulation type things. It could be a great way to practice um, automaticity with speech acts or other kinds of problem solving. Um, negotiation. Negotiation of meaning is considered one of the most useful ways to practice uh, meaningful uh, speaking. Um, give learners some kind of situation where they have to resolve issues with each other. Maybe they're got to doing um, this persuade each other to some kind of solution. You could give maybe a role play or a situation. For example, they've got to pick a, a picture that's uh, going to go in a magazine and they've got a variety of pictures and they each need to talk about, uh, evaluate the pros and cons of each picture. An information gap activity is where uh, each learner has some information that their partner or partners need and so they need to communicate with each other, ask questions or interact in order to uh, complete the information um, that they need. Um, using debates in the classroom or having students give uh, speeches or other types of formal presentations. You could do recordings. Um, you could use a speaking journal where students have to record a little bit every week. Um, this is a great way for them to practice um, timed, spontaneous speech. Um, also, learners could give each other instructions, and you can see, did they follow the instructions well? Did they speak clear enough that their partner could understand it? Um, another great way to get learners using language uh, is to go beyond the classroom. Um, get them interacting in the community, using language in, uh, to accomplish uh, project tasks interview people, um, complete transactions by going to the store or visiting um, some other kind of service organization. Um, a great ways to get learners um, feeling like language is relevant to them. When we assess speaking, here's some things we should be thinking about. First, we should not avoid assessing speaking. Yes, it's harder to do um, and uh, it can be sometimes uh, less reliable but if we don't assess speaking, learners are likely to think that speaking is not important and they won't practice it. So we need to have uh, an expectation that speaking does matter and sometimes making it assessed will uh, convince learners that it's important. We need to be aware of bias when we are grading speaking. Some learners are very outgoing and friendly and so they may, may seem easier for a teacher to grade that student higher. But what we need to focus on is the quality of the language that the student produces and not whether or not we like the student or whether they seem friendly and outgoing. Uh, we should also be looking to collect a variety of speaking samples, uh, not just one and not just one type, but different text types or genres and at different times. Um, so that uh, if there's a particular topic or a particular day that the learner isn't doing their best, that they'll have lots of opportunities to show um, who they are. And as an assessor, we'll get a more fair um, and accurate um, impression of what the learner can do. Now, successful speakers do a variety of different things. First, they use many strategies. And in the last video, we talked about some of these strategies that speakers use. They also focus and think about the forms of the language, pronunciation, grammar, vocabulary. Okay, um, They also do some self-talk in English, so it doesn't have to even be out loud. In their brain, they're thinking about what they're going to say in English, uh, and that helps prepare them for it better if they're um, formulating and thinking in English and giving themselves feedback and reflecting in English. They also look for lots of opportunities to communicate in the language, to look for places where they can speak English. Um, these types of learners are more likely to score better on assessments and to um, feel more confident in their speaking skills. So in this video we talked about the role of the teacher, we talked about some learning and assessment activities, and then we summarized by talking about some of the most important things that good speakers can do.